thank you ma'am uh, for a kind introduction so friend uh, this post lunch session uh, just to take you out of your fatigue and slumber i am taking you to smart exercises that is safe metabolically optimized aerobic resistance aerobic and resistance time efficient training so how do i all right so when you say see about exercise and you can see that exercise is one of the most potent intervention known to the human kind uh, the ex benefits provided by exercise cannot be fit into a single pill can be the spectrum of benefits from the exercise can lead from right from the anti aging effects improvement in endothelial dysfunction improvement in cardio metabolic health and reversal of so many cardio metabolic disorders but can you tell me what is the recommendation for exercise what is the recommendation for healthy exercise any any guess or any idea from your side what do you say how much exercise one should do so yes that is called 30 minutes per day five days a week aerobic training and resistance exercise twice a week you know you have seen so many people uh, walking every day in the park at a slow speed and you have also know so many people using the same weight for decades together but this type of exercise which is time dependent 30 minutes a day five days a week twice a week resistance training is usually associated with some amount of burning calories great psychological benefit some marginal cv effects and also these effects will lose their effect their import their beneficial effect on that person if they continue with the same amount of exercise now i am taking you to uh, three groups of the people and this data comes from the national uh, americas national health and uh, nutrition survey the first group is basically from a person like who who did very insufficient uh, insufficient amount of exercise just 15 to 10, 10 to 15 minutes in a day and that to a vigorous amount of exercise the second group the weekend warrior who did twice a week exercise amount to just one and half hours not more than one and half hours and the third group who exercise according to the recommendation not only the time but according to the intensity also when you see the benefit the all cause mortality reduction cvd mortality reduction cancer mortality reduction they are almost same so people who did exercise only 10 minutes a day had the benefit of exercise equivalent to the people who have who had exercise for 30 minutes more than 30 minutes per day more than 150 hours minutes per week so what is the common thread which is going through all these patient insufficient exercise according to the time but more of intensity only twice a week exercise and seven days almost every day of the exercise who had all people had all the same equal amount of the benefit and there are two threads basically the second one the second uh, in uh, finding from this same uh, studies that people who were physically not sufficient they had all called calls mortality reduction by 44% lower by engaging just twice a week resistance training so people who are not doing any aerobic exercise but they just did just twice a week of strength training they had 44% reduction in the mortality so the common thread all, all these people is number one is the cardio respiratory fitness or the vo2 max your ability of use oxygen during the exercise and you can see at any age group at the age of 30 years and at the age of 90 years if you are fit for your age you have got 40 to 70 percent low risk of dying so that is very very important and the benefit is there throughout all the age group right from the 30s to the 90s years of age so your cardio respiratory fitness sort of a, uh, is one of the most important determinant of the mortality all cause mortality and also the event the second finding or the second the thread is the muscle strength or the power of your muscle which is shown by the grip strength if you are having a chronic disease if you are not having any chronic disease but if you have got a good muscle strength good muscle power then the chances of your dying or getting an event is almost 3 to 5 times less as compared to person who has got a poor grip strength so vo2 max the aerobic capacity and the muscle strength these two factor together they can determine multiple things the subclinical atherosclerosis the future risk of developing cardio metabolic problem the mortality and the event and if you see the literature both of these things will trump almost any of the risk factor you take cholesterol you take cigarette smoking you take family history 
But if you got a good muscle strength, good cardiorespiratory fitness, your chances of dying or having event is very, very less. Now, with this view, saying that walk 30 minutes a day and do twice a week of resistance training is equivalent to saying a patient who has got blood pressure and diabetes, take one telmisartan, take one metformin and you will be okay. All right. So, for a drug, you need a dosage, a frequency of the dosage and also the outcome. You check blood pressure, you check blood sugar and then you decide about the dosage. Similarly with exercise, you want accurate heart rate, you want accurate weight lifted and you want accurate time spent. You progress the exercise so that you can get these two effects, VO2 max and the grip strength. Now, the number one aim of smart exercise is to improve the VO2 max. How do you do it? The simple answer or the quick answer is high intensity interval training. You start exercising, you warm up for 2 to 5 minutes, then you run or then you do a bicycling or you do swimming, whatever you want to do, do it intensely, take your heart rate to 80 to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate if you are fit, just for a few seconds, then come back towards the lower, lower intensity of exercise. Repeat this for five times and do it only twice or thrice a week. It will take you 20 minutes and you will be getting all these benefits. Again, the mitochondrial bi biogenesis, the anti-aging effect, the improvement in the cardiometabolic profile, reduction in blood pressure, improvement in lipid profile and also very, very significant increase in VO2 max. So this is called the HIT high intensity interval training. But many of you would say that I cannot run that fast. I cannot take my heart rate to 90% of my maximum. So then there is, and this is the example. This is the example from my own uh, data using the heart rate monitor. And you can see at the age of uh, 57, I could take my heart rate 180. Though my maximum heart rate according to my age is only uh, uh, around 163. But with this kind of hit inter interval training, you do it regularly, you improve your view to max. Now, if you cannot do high intensity interval training, there is the second slower method. The example is given over here. Subtract your age from 180. For this example, the person is 50 years old. So that would be 130. That is the maximum heart rate for the exercise. If you are not fit, reduce 5. If you are very, very unfit, reduce 10. If you are very fit, add 5. So for this person who is 50 years of age, he is just starting exercise, not very fit. We have taken his heart rate as 125. That is the maximum heart rate. Reduce 10 also. So the range is between 115 to 125. Now start exercising at this heart rate, but you need accurate heart rate measurement for 30 to 50 minutes a day and check about the timing, how much distance you could complete in 30 to 50 minutes of time. Within few weeks, you will find out that to keep between that, that rate, if you are doing, if your heart rate is going above 125, reduce the intensity of exercise. If your heart rate is less than 115, incre increase the intensity of exercise. Start walking fast. And within few weeks, you will find out that you could walk more distance given the same time. That is the improvement of your VO2 max. This is a very, very mild exercise. If somebody, some of you are doing the regular exercise, even the walking, you will find it frustratingly slow exercise. But if you maintain your heart rate between this two range, that is called the mephenton training or the slow heart rate training that trains your aerobic system and improves your VO2 max. This is the example of doing the slow aerobic training. Now we come to the muscle. Muscle produces certain wonderful molecules which can give benefits right from your brain to your bones. Now many of you would say that what could I do, what should I, why, when, why should I do the strength training exercise at the age of 40 or 50 or 60 years of age? The answer is very simple. If you don't have money, what do you want? You want money. You don't have muscle beyond the age of 35 or 40. So you want to do the strength training and strength training at these advancing years over the age of 40 or 50 would be more beneficial as compared to aerobic training in the prevention of chronic cardiometabolic condition. So it gives you more cost of your effort. So the second aim of smart exercise to improve the muscle strength, the traditional thing, do the exercise, choose a weight where you cannot go beyond the 15 repetition. Use four or five exercise. Either you can use a weight like a dumbbell or you can use your, your own body weight till you get fatigued. Again, some of you say, one of my senior asked me about the strength training. When I told him this recommendation, then he told me, Parimal, 
I am getting tired by just listening to listening to that. That I will fatigue my body till I uh, uh, till then I have to do the exercise. So again, you have, there is a smart way of doing it. Do the eccentric resistance training. Go fast against the gravity. When you are coming towards the gravity, reduce the speed of the movement. Same metabolic benefit even in diabetic patient. Half the time and three fourth of the weight. So you find it 10 kg quite heavy to extensive training with 7.5 kg or 5 kg. Alright, you want more benefit, more smart exercise. Do the blood flow restriction occlusion exercise. You have to put the bands over here and over your thighs. Now, very, very small weight and the benefit goes not only, or only to the local muscle, throughout the body. Systemic beneficial effect at a very, very low uh, load of weight. And again, you can reduce the weight further. So, if you combine both eccentric training and the blood flow resistance training, just 30% of the load using 10 kg of dumbbell, you can get these benefits with 3 kg of dumbbell with half the time, more the benefit. So, that is the smart resistance training and that improves the mobility, the balance, the muscle strength and the grip strength. <coughs> now, you must be asking, I am doing HIIT and I am doing resistance training. Should I do more? The answer is yes. Higher sedentary time per day is associated with adverse metabolic outcome even in people with high cardiorespiratory fitness. So, it matters that if you've got even good fitness, then you have to do certain small resistance uh, movement or the uh, small muscular movement activity throughout the day. This is the example. These four activities are the example. Do it, 10 repetitions of each, repeat it thrice. It will take you three minutes. Do it just before meal and 45 after five to 45 minutes after meal. The benefits: reduction in glucose, reduction in insulin level, reduction in triglyceride level, reduction improvement in C-peptide level. All right, three minutes of exercise before meal and 45 minutes after meal, and you will be getting all these cardiometabolic benefits. Repeat it six times in a day: break before breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch, after lunch, before dinner, after lunch. That will complete the uh, sort of a smart exercise, the aerobic training, the resistance training and these breaking the sedentary uh, movement. Now, some of you want to play a sport. Which sport is associated with the best effort? So, that is the answer is racket sport. Both the risk reduction of all cause mortality, risk reduction of CVD mortality is maximum with the racket sport. Table tennis, badminton or tennis, you can choose these sport. Any sport is beneficial, but the maximum beneficial sport are the racket sport. Now, whatever you do in your practice for your patient, check the VO2 max and check the muscle strength. You can see the separation of the graph here. Fit for age, not fit for age. Fit for age means 85% of your cardiorespiratory fitness for your age and less than 85%. The separation occurs within two months. No risk factor would give you this insight for your patient health as this VO2 max would give you. All right. And the separation at the age, uh, end of 10 years is more than any SGD2 inhibitor or any GLP-1 analog. So, try to develop the fitness habit in your patient. The grip strength, you can see the report from the pure study, very, very respectable study, better predictor than blood pressure. So, check blood pressure, but check grip strength and VO2 max also. Now, your options with technology, these belts are there, now available in India. They sort of a, you have to wear those belt on, on your chest, they will track your card respiratory rate, they will track your heart rate and they will also give you the um, uh, idea how much exercise you want to do in one week time. So, they take the guessing out of the game and they will give you the objective sort of a insight how much exercise you want to do. Now, the latest in the fit versus fat science, uh, a very respectable study but we all missed it. Every five years, there is a mammoth study which shows the importance of cardiorespiratory fitness, fitness or grip strength, but we do not sort of give attention to that. So, again, a famous study divided patient into three ways, the low, the normal weight, uh, slightly higher weight and obese patient and fitness, lower fitness, normal fitness and good fitness. The results are there. 30% lower mortality in obese patient, more importantly. Higher fitness people had 70% lower mortality, mortality hazard regardless of their BMI. Again, so we talk about weight reduction for the management of diabetes, but we do not talk about the improvement of the fitness so that we can get the 70% lower.
Now some of you might be afraid about the death, the gym, sudden death, sudden cardiac death. It is a real danger. But the sports related uh, sudden cardiac death, is, they are they are constituted a very, very small subset of the sudden death done uh, occur, occurring during the exercise. We had a better response with initial CPR. So we should train up more and more people in CPR and should be and, and gym should be equipped with defibrillator. But the most important fact, most of these patients, they had very high prevalence of established CVD as well as symptoms that manifest in advance of sudden cardiac death. So people neglect their health and people do not undergo the proper medical test before they are undertaking the exercise. So this is the message of this slide. And again, if you are very much worried, the same belt can check the cardiac stress on your heart. It is sort of undergoing a daily TMT for during your exercise. You can see the beat by beat ECG and they will show the cardiac strain and they will give you a beep. So you can reduce the intensity of the exercise. So they consider multiple factors, the QRS morphology, the ST segment changes, and then they, they, they give you a beep. The cost is not much for the people who are concerned and who can afford it. So uh, the safety first is there. Now these features are available in the heart monitor. Now the smart exercise protocol to sum it up. Aerobics and tra training three times in a week. High intensity exercise twice a week. Resistance exercise preferably with the blood flow restriction and the eccentric training 20 minutes per day twice a week and short resistance activity SRA 3 minute 6 times a day preferably just before and 45 minutes after taking the So this is the info infographic of the whole of, of the smart exercise but after medical assessment. So thank you friend, thank you very much for a patient hearing and I think I concluded my topic within the time. Thank you very much for a patient.